Okay, let's go very, very quick. Time is short. Here is at the end of the parashas Matos is the story of the Bnei Ruven and Bnei God. Torah says that they had a lot of sheep. They saw the land that was conquered of Sichem Voig and they said, wow, what a good land, a lot of pasture, we want to stay here, we don't want to cross the Jordan. The Svarim say that why did they have a lot of sheep? Simple, Reuven gets doubled inheritance, he's the Bechor. Yeah. So he had, uh, Yaakov had a lot of sheep, so he got double of that, can you imagine over these years, that multiplied, so he had a lot. God also had a lot of sheep, why? Simple, God... The, it says that they were Machava the Samon. They loved the Mon. That's why the Mon is called Zeragad. Zeragad. So God had a lot of Mon, which is called Zeragad. They never slaughtered their cows. So they had a lot of cows. They had a lot of uh, meat. They, I mean, they did not eat the meat like the other ones. They had a lot of livestock. That they, they, the Bnei Ruven and Bnei God see that, wow, this land is a place of a lot of pasture. They came to Moshe and to Loza, to the leaders, they said, This land is a lot of pasture. And we have a lot of cattle. If we find favor in your eyes, give us this as an inheritance. Don't take us over the Jordan. And Moshe says to God and Reuben, your brothers are going to go and battle and you're going to sit here. Why will you bring back, will you pull back the heart of the Jewish people from going in and entering the land that God had promised to them. Interesting, we'll talk about this later. It sounds like this land was not the promised land. On this side of the Jordan River was not the promised land. The promised land was on the other side of the Jordan River. This is what your parents did. Bisholchi when I sent the spies from Kodesh Barnea to look at the land, they went out until the river called Eshkel, and they saw the land, and they held back the heart of the Jew, the Bilti Boyal Oritz, not to go into the land that God gave to them. And God's anger was uh, and there was God's anger on the Jews by Yema who be Shavalema and he vowed to say Imuru Anoshim Oilam and Metzanim and Benesim Shana Vamayla Eis Adam Hashem Is Batel Avram Litzchak Liyakif of Keloy Milu Acharei. If these people shall uh, shall see the land that I promised Avram Litzchak Liyakif because they didn't follow after me. Built the call of Ben Yefune by Aknizi Yeshua Benun Kimila Achar Hashem. Besides, two exception of two people, they will see the land. That's called of Ben Yefuna and Yeshua Benun. And they stayed in the desert. And you're going to add to the anger. You'll bring damage to all this nation. They came close to Moshe. And they said, no. We will build here. We will build here a, a place for the sheep. And cities for our children. Was necessary all Born. this conversation? Unbelievable. Very so much long. So, yes. The question was always, why did they tell him in the beginning? Yeah, right. Yeah, they have to stay. Well, we're, no, we're going to do is we're going to fight. And in the beginning, beginning. Then Moshe was going to come in with the Musar. You know, half hour of Musar, and then they... Well, they were negotiating. What we're going to go first. Ad Asher imavinu melamakayim. We will bring him to their places. V'yoshev tapena barayam mitzvot zerim neirish v'aretz, and our children will sit in the fortified cities. 
to protect them from the inhabitants of this land. We will not return to our homes until every Jew has their portion. We will not be on this side of the, uh, we take our portion, and this side of the Jordan. We at the other side of the Jordan. If you will do this, you will be a cholutz. You will be the first for the war. Then you will be clean in the eyes of Hashem and all the Jewish people. This land will be yours. If you will not do this, you will sin to God. And this is the, the this will be your sin. Now, build cities. That Rashi says, and sages say, he told them it was wrong. We think that first you think about how you're going to build your business, and then you think about how you're going to build your homes for your children. It's the other way around. First, build a house for your children, and then build the barns for your sheep. And keep your promise. We will do as you command. By the way, there's a lot of psukim here that teach us a lot of alochas, all the alochas of conditions. In every business transaction, we learn from Bnei God and Bnei Ruve. So it happens to be there's a lot of psukim here that are not just a svas yeser, they're not just extra language. All commerce and every business transaction is based at tonight, there's four conditions in every. And every condition that all learned from these psukim. I think what happened with the miraculous with Moshe Rabbeinu, he is he's afraid that would be the same thing. Yeah, that's what he says exactly. So exactly what he's doing. <laughs> we are going to do this. We are going to do this. He gave a command. And that they have to make sure that the deal is followed. If they will go first out at the war, this land will be their portion. Then they won't get this land. They will be with you in Eretz Canaan. So this is what we'll do. We will go into the land of Canaan. But we have our portion already the other side of the Jordan. He gave them the kingdom of Sichon. Which is a huge piece of land. If you look at the uh, what we know, what we think we know, the land of Sichon and Oig is huge. It's uh, it's, it's 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 today. It's a uh, it's uh, maybe a huge portion of Jordan and then Syria. It's a huge portion of land, and that was given as a gift to Bnei God, Bnei Reuven, to half of Menashe Ben Yosef, Malachas Sichon Malachamoyim, Malachas Oig Malachabos, and Aretz Lale, but Gulas Aretz Lesavi. Why a gift? It wasn't a gift. I don't want to deal with that. I want to deal today with one specific, and that's the last pasuk is the red herring to, uh, here today. It's the schmaltz herring. Out of oil in, in the schmaltz. We read so many psukim, and I just. Every other Pesach talks about the two nations that are talking. You count almost every Pesach in the past 32 Pesukim, there's Bnei God and Bnei Reuven, Bnei God Re Reuven, Bnei God Re Reuven, Bnei Reuven. Sometimes first Reuven, then God, then the other way around. And Aban says, Reuven was more wealthy, God was bigger fighters. Reuven were more prominent because they were older shaved. Okay, sometimes first Reuven, then God. No one ever heard of Menashe. 32 Pesukim. Go by every other pasuk you hear about Reuven and God. They have a lot of sheep, and they want a land, a pasture. Reuven has a lot of sheep, as we said, because they inherited the double. God didn't were vegetarians, so they didn't slaughter all the animals. So they had a lot of sheep. Great. Menashe. Who's Menashe? Who is Menashe? Didn't talk about Menashe for thirty two psukim. Only half. And half. Yeah. What's going on? They didn't talk. For 32 psukim, every other pasuk, Reuven and God, 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 
all of a sudden you get to the 33rd Pasuk, Vayitel HaMoyshe Levnei God Levnei Ruben, V'lachatze Shevet Menashe. So Rabbi Benazah says, eh, you know, the Torah didn't want to bother half a Shevet. They were also from the people talking. A little bit of a, a poor answer. Maybe it's good in Pshat the Pshat. But um, the Rebbe brings a Yerushalmi. It's unbelievable Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi, read it the Yerushalmi. It's in the bottom of the page. The Yerushalmi says, from the other side of the Jordan, you don't bring Bikurim. That's not the land of milk and honey. When the, the Mishnah says, the Madrashim say about ten holy, there's ten dargas in holiness. According to many opinions in the Madrash and the Mishnah, there is a, a higher level of holiness in the land that's on the other side of the Georgian, uh, uh, the Eretz Shiva Amomin, the Eretz Canaan, over Ever Ayarden, where Uven and God would reside. It's a bigger Kedush, it's a higher level in holiness. Why is it higher? So there's many, but this Mishnah holds, Rabbi Yisak literally says, you can bring Bikurim from all of Israel, but from the other side of the Jordan, no Bikurim. That's not called the land of milk and honey. That's when the Uven and God and the half Menashe is there. So what would they do? They didn't bring Bikurim. They brought other things, Trumas, Maesiris, but not Bikurim. Where, they lost where out in the mitzvah. They lost out in that mitzvah, where yes. Is this today? today, we don't know exactly, but obviously it's on the other side of the Jordan. We think it's most of what's today Jordan. The country called Jordan is mostly, is mostly from the place of Ruvain. And then uh, God, the Menashe, is what's today uh, Jordan and Syria. Can you imagine uh, if we were there today? How much protection will, will be much Unbelievable. Better. They're just that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, we'll talk about this soon, and since we already mentioned it, uh, at the, uh, there is a big discussion about what was the, the next week, in this week's Pasha, in Masa, the Torah tells you exactly the borders of Eretz Yisrael. But it only tells you the border of the land of Canaan, of the seven nations. But when God spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu, he said, I am going to give you from the ocean until the Euphrates River. That's huge. You look at Israel on the map, you can't even write Israel on the map. You have to put it in the Mediterranean. <coughs> but if you look from Minayama Godla Nahar Peros, that's huge. That's a big piece of the map. You can put four fingers on it. It's a big piece of land. What happened? So our sages say the Gemara Baba Basa Dafnum Vav. Rashi talks about it, and all the Rishonim talk about this. They're about the concept of the seven nations and the ten nations. There is the land of the seven nations, which is the land of Canaan. Canaan was the main of the seven nations, and then there is the land of three more nations: Keni, Knizi, Vekadmoini. That was told to Avram Avinu Bebris Ben Absalom that that land will come to him but it didn't say when when God gave the land to Moshe Rabbeinu he gave him the land of the seven nations now there was a technical problem Sichen and Oig didn't allow them to go into the land of Canaan so they wiped out Sichen and Oig not only that Rashi says that there were pieces of land of that belonged, there were three nations that God said you cannot touch, which is in the bottom of Israel, which is Amon, Moev, and Sich, uh, uh, Amon, Moev, and Edom, and God said don't touch them. But many years before, Sichon had the battle against Amon, Moev, and they took away a big piece of land, and that became kosher for the Jews to conquer. Now, not, uh, just to understand better what we're going to learn today, so I want a little bit to go into this. There is, um, there is, first of all, there is, uh, in the Mishnah, talks about what are the three lands. Rashi Chumash brings that Keni, Knizi, Vekadmoini is Ammon, Moyov, and Edoin. According to that, Israel in the days, so the Ammon says that in the Alochem, it says, Im Yekik, Yachiv Hashem Alkechaz Gevulcha, when God will make your borders larger, never happened. When Mashiach will come, it's going to happen. That then the borders of Israel will be larger. They will get the land of Amon, Moyov, and Edoin. According to that, Israel is going to be, I mean, what, ten where, times where, the size. Where, where Amon, Amon, Amon uh, we don't know, but uh, ba- yeah, exactly, know. it's on the other side of the yeah. Jordan. No, the lower. It's uh, basically Jordan and part, maybe part of Saudi Arabia or 
a little piece piece of Saudi Arabia and, and Jordan. You mean it's further right? Moyov, Amman, and, and Edom. And for sure, the, the, the Sinai Desert, the Sinai Desert, basically, and parts of Jordan. Maybe a little piece of Saudi Arabia. But there are other opinions. There's all kinds. There's so many opinions in the Mishnah. The opinions range from from far out. There is opinion if if you look in the Mishnah in Yerushalmi Shvis, Rabbi Huda Oimer, Aravia, Shlamia, Navatia. These are I mean these are unbelievable these are countries north of Israel. Asia, Svamia, Damasek. Asia? Right. It's, it's, I mean this is like Damasek is Damascus. Uh, and Svamia is somewhere in the middle of Turkey. Um, Asia is it's, it's unbelievable. Then there is an opinion that um, Asia, Katargi, Turkey. Israel is going to be is, now. The, now you know. Now there's a few countries that are big troublemakers to Israel, in the north of Israel, Bordi. But you know, there, according to most most countries, uh, most opinions, these are the countries that are from Kani, Knizi, Kadmoni, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon. According to most opinions, this this is Kani Knizi Vakadmoini. So you understand that they're a little cooking inside because uh, the no, days they, are coming and, they, and this is this is Kani Knizi Vakadmoini is going to become part of Israel. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think there's so, Israelis in Turkey that uh, you can make in Israel already. Yeah. <laughs> but then it'll be Israeli flag will be flying in Turkey and, and in Syria and, and and many other countries. So, but the, one of the opinions is many to shine him that Kani Knizi Vikadmoni is whatever it is. Is the seven nations is small compared to the entire land that, that was promised? Because as you just look at the Chumash, it says Minayama Godla Nara Paras from from the big ocean until the Euphrates. It's a huge country. Now, according to so, according to the original promise, there's a land of ten nations. Moshe Rabbeinu got the land of seven nations. Sichon and Oig was just like, it was a technical problem. There was a huge piece of land, but there were two kings that wouldn't allow them to travel past them. So they said, if you let us travel peacefully, we're not going to touch you. But Sichon and Oig didn't believe the Jews, so they decided they'd pick to have war, and and the Jews decimated them. I mean, all of a sudden, they ended up with a huge piece of land. They didn't even plan to have it. They didn't know what to do with it, right? So here is where God and Rubin came along and said, wow, this land is huge. It's very green, right? If you look at Israel, besides the, from, besides the Galil, it's not so green. It's, it's desert yeah, land, yeah. right? Well, Israel. So oh, yeah. they said, this is very wet land. This is very fertile land. We want to be here with the sheep. So the Yosek really says, good, that's, that was the land was given to them, to Reuven and God, but that's not the land of milk and honey. The land of milk and honey that was given to Moshe Rabbeinu is only from the other side of the Jordan, and therefore from the, from the Jordan to the ocean, and therefore that is not a place of Bikurim. However, the, the Gemara says, Tony, a different Mishnah, Asher nasat li loishin atalt li ma'atzmi. It really, the other side of the Jordan is the land of milk and honey. But it says, when the Jew brought Bikot me, thanks God for the <coughs> land, Asher that you gave me. Reuven and God, they didn't receive the land, they took the land. They asked for it. It has to be the land that was given as a gift from God. They asked for it, so therefore, they don't say... Is this the reason why we couldn't give him Mises? But Mises, the as they do give. But just not Bikurim, just not Bikurim. They give Mises and Truma, yeah. But there's a difference of a Chatsi Shevet Menashe. Mando, Omer Hashem Asate, Leve Lo Yishin Atal, Tali Mi Yatsmi. Chatsi Shevet Menashe, Lo Yinot Lo Ma'atzman. And they were Chayev Bikurim. Mando, Omer Hazovitz Cholov Advoash, Afal Pichin, and Hazovitz Cholov Advoash. The Yishami says it depends. If you hold at the other side of the Jordan, the place of... Sichen and Oib is not part of the land of milk and honey, so it doesn't matter. Reuven, God, Menashe, you don't bring the Kurim. The other opinion says, no, 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 this is also the land of milk and honey. They're both the land of milk and honey. It's just that Reuven and God, they were chutzpah, they went and they asked for the land. So therefore, it wasn't to give, when God wants to give it, he wants to give it a gift. You know, when you have a little child, you want to give them a birthday gift, what are you going to give me for that? Ah, you lose the whole, you take the whole thing out, right? 
You, when you want to give someone a gift and they ask for the gift, it's, it, it, they lose their whole value. So Benasha, but Benasha didn't. So the Yishavah says Benasha did bring Bikurim. They didn't ask for this land. Moshe Rabbeinu gave it to them. So we see that Rebbe says from here that Moshe Rabbeinu gave it to them. The Ramban actually says that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know what to do. He had he gave Reuven such a huge piece of land. I mean, the whole Israel is nothing compared to the land of Reuven and God. The land of of Israel is is this and here you have and here you have this is the land of the seven nations and here's the right here's the land of the seven nations and there's a huge piece of land that Uven and and and, uh, and uh, God huge bigger than all the Eretz Knan put together so he gave Uven a huge piece he gave God a huge piece there was still land left and what are we gonna do with it much anyone 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 anyway, I said no 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 we want to go to the land of seven nations anyone anyone so half Menashe said, okay, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. You know what, if you don't know where to do with it, we'll take it. But the Rebbe says that's a big doichek, because uh, you see that Moshe Rabbeinu was angry. He said, Moshe Rabbeinu wanted all the Jews to move into the land of the seven nations. And he said, this is the land that God gave it to me now. Sichon and Oib, we killed them just because, we, because they were our enemies, so we had to get them, but we were all moving in. So he, all of a sudden, he's, why did he pick half of Menashe that they didn't ask for it? If they didn't ask for it, why are you giving it to them? And why did they take it? And the Rebbe says, furthermore, we look in the, in the Karbonus that the Nesim brought, it says, every one of the Lezevach HaShlom, and Boker Shnaim, Elim Chamisha, Tudim Chamisha. So the Gemara says, and the Medrash says, uh, that for Menashe, what does it mean, Bokeh Shnaim? Keneged Shevet Menashe, Shenech Lek Lishnaim, Velokeh Shnei Chalokim Ba'aretz. Chetzir Be'evet Ayardim, Vechetzir Be'evet Kanan. It was a good thing. It was a good thing that they got two pieces of land. But on the other hand, with Reuven and God, we say it was a bad thing. There's so many Medroshim, one med it says that when Sanchev came and he took the ten tribes to Golas, the first ones to go was Reuven and God. Why? Because Nachla Muvohelis, because they, this was a bad... They, they, they grabbed this Nachla. Um, the, the Medrash says that they were concern, more concerned about their money. They, uh, so therefore, the, the all kinds of negative things that we say about Reuven and God. And what's interesting is when the Medrash talks, they only say Reuven and God. They don't mention Menashe. So we see from the Medrashim that Menashe brought a Korban, Bokr Shnaim, Kenegeshnei Chalokim. For them it was a positive thing that they got two portions, one in the land of the seven nations and one in the land of the three nations. But for Reuven and God, it was a bad thing. And that's why they were punished first. And when Sarkhedev came, they were the ones to get knocked out first. So the Shaila is, what, how could it be that taking a piece of this land for Reuven and God is bad and for Shimon it's good? Is it good or is it bad? What is it? Menashe, Menashe got knocked out also. Menashe got knocked out also, but that Medjish doesn't say because of Nachlam of Ahelis. That's because they, they did Avedis. But not because of Nachlam of Ahelis. So uh, the Rebbe says the answer is simple. Everything that happens in the Torah happens from Moshe Rabbein. Huh? Everything is simple. Every simple. Uh, but the Rebbe says uh, everything is simple. <laughs> Everything has to happen for Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe, everything. It says when they go into the Vayereu Hashem as a Oretz. Vayomer Eilov Nas Zoyz Oretz as Shenishbati Lavron. Lazarach et Nana Risicha Beinecha. The Gemara says, Kol Sheher HaKadosh Baruch Hu Moshe Chai Vemaise. If Moshe looked at it, at that land, it's Chai Vemaise. Everything has to come from Moshe Rabbeinu. The Torah has to come from Moshe Rabbeinu. Mashiach is going to teach big secrets, but Mashiach is not making a new Torah. He's going to teach the secrets of Moshe Rabbeinu Torah. The Goya Lachin is going to be a big Ula. But we say, It all started from Moshe Rabbeinu. Israel is going to be huge. It's the seven nations small. But when they get the land of the ten nations, Israel is going to be one of the biggest countries in the world. Great. But it has to start with Moshe Rabbeinu. It has to start with Moshe Rabbeinu. So the Rebbe has a Mordek Echidush. It says, Yarchev Hashem Eskela Kechaz Gavulcha, that the Ebishta is going to, in the days of Mashiach, is going to make the boundaries of Israel huge. They're not only going to have the land of the seven nations, they're going to have the land of the ten nations. So the Shaila is, Moshe Rabbein has to do something for it. 
So the answer is that according to many opinions, the land of Sichon Ve'oig is from the land of Keni Knizi Ve'kadmoini. Even according to the land, opinions that this is not part of Keni Knizi Ve'kadmoini, but it's not part of Israel proper, of the seven nations. It's something from the bigger vision. It's something from the bigger promise. When God said to Avram in a bris ben asorim, your children will have minayama godlad nahar peras, Sichon is somewhere in there. It's not from that little land, which is not so little. Israel today is not even the full thing of the seven nations. But, uh, but, but it's, it's small compared to what Mashiach will have in the land of Canaan, Knizia, and Kadmoni. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted that there should be one nation that is already taking a piece of the land of Keni Knizi Vikadmoini. To ready, because just like Moshe Rabbeinu, everything has to start with Moshe Rabbeinu. The land that he looks like, it becomes Chayv Maisa, the Torah has to come to Moshe Rabbeinu, the Geula has to come through Moshe Rabbeinu. Also, inherent for Israel to become a huge country, it has to start with Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu picked Menashe. He said, half of you, if I'm going to take the whole shave at Menashe and put them there, it look like they're, they're like uh, Reuven and God. They're, considered, they're, they're looking for their pocketbook. But it's not true. It was not true. So therefore, he put half of them in Israel proper and half of them here to say that they're not like Reuven and God who are looking for their pocketbook. They were, these, Menashe was looking to establish that Israel is a huge country. To start off the vision of the end of days, where Eretz Yisrael has this huge land, including Keni, Knizia, and Kadmoni. Why did he pick Menashe? So, very simple. Because Menashe, the word, what does Menashe mean? Menashe means that uh, uh, Yosef HaTzadik says, Ki nashani elekim al kol al moli v'al kol beis ovi. That, that I'm, I, I'm always want to jump out of Egypt and go back to my father's home. Menashe was a nation that were, oh, they were looking that when are we going to come to the days of Mashiach that this is really, this Israel is going to be really the country that it needs to be. That the huge country that the Abishta promised to Avram Avinu. And more, in the Api Chassidus, what is uh, the, 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 the Chassidus says that the, the Moshe Rabbeinu compared Reuven and God to the Meraglim. Why? Because they had a similar mentality. What was this, the mistake of the Meraglim? The Meraglim thought that it's much more better to be spiritual. Why go into a land and spend work. this work, the time and work, and working so many hours and so few hours is spent on learning Torah, so much uh, time is spent on plowing the fields, and so little time is spent in the base Medrash. They said, just like the Shvotim, they were shepherds. A shepherd, a shepherd could sit, and the shepherd could uh, could could uh, could be in his thoughts. A shepherd could. And he's just a sheep, or graze around. They could dvekus. The the mind can be always dovak in the Abishta. It doesn't have to. But if you're plowing and planting, you're 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 six days a week, six years. You're so busy. Meragum said. We want to stay in the desert and eat the man. We want to have the Beit Shal Miriam. We want to have the Manana Kovud. We could serve God on a spiritual level. World of Machshava, not in the world of Maisa. That's the basic thing that Chassidus explains about the mistake of the Managla. And the mistake was, Because Dafka, when a Yid comes into the world of Maisa, and true, there's more Nisyonis there, but Dafka, that's when the Yid... It brings them bleak wool. Where does he touch the Ein Soif of Hashem? Is Dafka when he comes into the world of Misa. So, But that was a mistake of the Meragla. So Moshe Rabbeinu said that the Reuven and God, a little bit of that, they don't want to go. They wanted the place with this green pasture, the sheep are there, they graze, they don't have to overwork, they could sit and be dveikas, not Kodesh Baruch Hu. they could sit, they like, sit out in the field with the... With a, with a, they have on their phone, they have the whole Shas on the phone, they have an app, and this app has the whole Shas, and 30, 30 it's 5,000 Svodim, Mishailas, and Shuvas, and all the, everything is there. They sit, and they have a little whistle, and they take the sheep, and they sit down, and they graze all day, and they're sitting and learning their five daf gemara every day. Not daf yoim, chamisha dafim le
So that's what the mistake of Reuven. But Menashe was not that way. Menashe was the son of Yosef Atzadik. Yosef Atzadik was the opposite of the Meraglim. The Meraglim, he, he, he was a, first of all, Yosef Atzadik himself. Yosef Atzadik was able to be Atzadik in Mitzrayim, in Erva Sa'oretz, in a place that was Erva Sa'oretz, in the worst place. Okay, so as we know from Petifer, and we know in general from society of Mitzrayim that it was a very morally, it was a decrepit place. But Yosef at Tzaddik stayed at Tzaddik. The Shvatim couldn't understand. They said to be at Tzaddik, you have to be a little bit removed outside the city with the sheep and they graze. Not on Avenue J, not on Coney Island, not, not, on, not on Main Street. Somewhere out in the field, that's where you could be at Tzaddik. But Yosef showed that you could be at Tzaddik Atazoi. Atazoi. They say that Tzadik could be a Monsi. Atazoi. <laughs> With the Monsis. Rabbi, in the long run. One second. So, but but Yosef Atzadik said, in Mitzrayim you can be. So therefore, the, his grandchildren, Yosef Atzadik had grandchildren. They were girls, five girls. Usually, Kvoy de Bas Melech Pnima. They have to be Tznias. And here, these girls went out and they stood in front of Moshe Rabbeinu and in front of Alozar and they said, that we want a portion in the land. So we see So we see Yosef at Tzadik was able to be at Tzadik even when he was in in the audits, and also his grandchildren were Mechavavas as audits. Therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Ah, this is the best group of people to take. Half of them will be in Eretz Canaan, and the other half they will start fulfilling the chazon of Yemaisa Mashiach when we're going to have the land of Canaan, Knizia, and Kadmain. In the long run, Reuven and God, they were the Chalotzim, they were in the front. So why are we putting all this on them? They were the first one to fight. They were in the front. Right. So they why? Were, so look, there's, there's a certain Milas. Listen, they, we, we, the, the Milas is not taken away. They were Chalots, they were vegetarians, they loved the man. These were all good things. If you make a, a line in the middle of a page, you want to talk about the good things of Reuven and God, these are the good things. True. Cholutz was a, is on the, in that? the good column, on the top. The army man. Exactly. Cholutz is on the top. Cholutz, <laughs> Cholutz, very, uh, very, uh, uh, they, they, had, they loved the man. They have a lot of milas. But this was. Moshe Rabbeinu said, a chisorim. It's like the people who fight for the soil and die for the soil, and then the father and grandfather go ahead and give the land back. Your <laughs> child die for this land, and you can't give it back. What's the idea? <laughs> Same thing with them. So uh, they have a lot of milas, but this was also a chisorim, right? It was a milas and a chisorim. But true, there's nothing better than they were cholutz and taka. They proved themselves to be to be, for, uh, then the Gemara says about the God, the God, no one could slice the enemy like God. Good, the good right? Then, right. God would slice off their head and the arm in one shot. They had a trick. They knew how to do it. So when they would, they would kill the enemy, they would slice off their, their head and the arm in one slice. God was like, there was, some, there was nothing like the fighters of God. Good. That was their Milo. That was their Milo. But now we're talking about the Milo of Menashe. Now we're talking about the Milo of Menashe. So bottom line. What was the original question? The question was, if you look in this week's parsha, and Matas, you go through 32 psukim, God and Reuven, God and Reuven, God and Reuven, Reuven and God, Reuven and God, Reuven and God, they are asking to get the land of Sichon and Oig, because it's full of pasture. No mention of half a shave at Menashe. All of a sudden, after the 33rd pasuk, when it's after the whole deal, is sealed is Vayit Elam Moishel of Nei God of Nei Ulchatz Shevet Menashe Ben Yosef of Sma Malach Sichem Malach Amoidi Ves Malach Oig Malach Abashem. What happened? So, and so there's all kinds of doichik answers in the Forshim. The Rebbe thinks that the answer is simple. That there were two. There really there was there was there was God and Uvein. That there was a chisorin in their taking this land, and that's why the the Chazal they get scorned from Chazal for asking for this land. But then there was Menashe. Menashe is complimented. We say uh, when he brought his carbon, so his carbon was Bnei Bokeshnayim, 
לזבח השלום בבוקר שניים, כנגד שבט מנש, שני חלק לשניים, ולא כך שני חלקים. It was a mile, this was a mile, that they took two, two parts. So what's the pshat? The Rebbe says because the Mashiach is going to come, the finally the Abish is going to fulfill the original promise to give the Jews the land of the ten nations, including Keini, Knizi, and Kadmoini. And this land on the other side of the Jordan is, according to many opinions, Mamish, Keini, Knizi, Kadmoini, or it's similar to Keini, Knizi, Kadmoini. And the, when Mashiach will come as Kiyach, Hashem as Kiyach as Gavulcha, we're going to get this piece of land. So Moshe Rabbeinu picked one special Shevet Menashe, where half of them are going to go into the land of the seven nations, and half of them are going to start the Yemois HaMashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu buried in this area, in the context of food? Right. It's also right. A, a, a right. For that. But that's to be there also for his people, to bring them back there to Yisrael, the Yemois HaMashiach. When what the Rebbe said... What happened to Ephraim in all this picture? Why only Menashe? Uh, about Menashe, because Menashe has a different Mila. Again, everyone has their Milas. Mena Menashe had a Mila that even though he's always looking to go back to base Ovi. Ephraim was ki frani likim oni, which is a different thing. He knows how to cope in the land of, the, of, of his suffering. But Menashe is always yearning for Mashiach. Menashe is screaming Mashiach now, day and night. He was Lubavitch. That's the, huh? He was Lubavitch. I guess. He was screaming at that, not only Lubavitch. Yeah. It, has to, it has to be more. It has to be that uh, Menashe is infectious. The Rebbe, when he said the Sicha, the first this is in Lakuta Sichas, exactly, the first Lubavitch. In Lakuta Sichas, they just bring the Lomdas. And the Rebbe spoke about the Sicha, uh, and it was a Fabrengen uh, Shabbos Agodol Tov Shemem Hay. What year is it? 1985, Shabbos HaGadol, and the Rebbe said the story. Now we know the story is about the Shliach Reb Moshe Feller. The Rebbe didn't say any names, Kedar Kebakoidosh. He said there was a story with a Shliach, that there was a Yid he tried to be Makarov. The Yid thought of himself as a highly intelligent person. Again, we know now who the Yid is, yeah. Professor Velvel Green, who uh, later, uh, later wrote a, a book, a full book, about his encounters with the Rebbe. He has, he, he considered himself a Kotmensch, he was a professor in philosophy, and uh, he wanted and he wanted answers from the Rebbe about the uh, issues of, of faith and religion. And there is, he published an entire book, you can buy it, there's a book, it's uh, printed in Hebrew and also in English. I don't know the name, if you want, I'll clean the Remind me after the shoot. Uh, huh? <laughs> professor Velvel Green. He was later a professor in, in university in Be'er Sheva. At, uh, he, he published a couple of years ago. He passed away. He, before he passed away, he published a book. And he, how he was totally a secular Jew. He had zero shaykhs to any Judaism. And uh, he, uh, he met Rabbi Feller. And Rabbi Feller tried to be mekan of him. And Rabbi Feller brought him to the Rebbe. And then... The Rebbe, he had, he had many echidas, and as I said, he published an entire book, letters, questions, and answers, and questions, and answers, and you see how the Rebbe influences him, and from being an atheist, he becomes a believer, and a person that keeps all 630 mitzvahs, he grew a beautiful big beard, and he became not only a professor, but also a person that was kind of hundreds, if not thousands, to become frum. Unbelievable power. The Rebbe says, what in his opinion was the clincher, for Velvo Green. So he's, the Rebbe said the story that this Shliach came to visit this person. And they were talking about religion and faith. And uh, this fellow got up to bring a book from a bookcase. The Shliach realized that it's getting late and uh, the conversation is going and it's not finishing. And he's going he's gonna to miss Zman Menchen. It's not going to be Shkia. So he grabbed his gartel. And uh, he put on his gartel, and he, put, he, put, he faced the wall, and he davened. In the meantime, the professor came back, and he opened the book, and he wanted to, the rabbi's not there. He sees him standing at the wall and shaking. Hmm. He thought this, uh, this uh, he didn't know Shigar. davening, he didn't know anything. Nebuch, he did zero. He didn't go to shul on Yom Kippur. So he didn't, uh, know, what he didn't know what a shul is, he knew nothing. So he thought this guy is crazy. After, after uh, the Rebbe Feller finished the Shemin Esra, so uh, the professor asked him, what's going on? So he explained to him about Zman Tefillah. The Rebbe said that this 
all the debate and all the discussion, all the going back and forth, knew. But this was the clincher. Wow. He saw that this guy really means it. It's not only a theoretical thing. He did a crazy thing. I mean, here he's trying to make a relationship, and he's standing at the wall and shaking. I mean, so with a, the way Professor Volvo Green with a sh with a uh, shoelace around his uh, waist. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he was thing that he was perplexed and mad. He was a little bit. I'm angry. I'm right. That's the way he tells the story. I'm telling you the way that never told it in Shabbos Agodel. That part that never didn't say. Um, so the Rebbe said the same thing here. Every year has to be like Menashe. Menashe is always saying, I want to be the base Ovi. I know Israel is the place where every single Jew has to be. And it's HaKodesh, and it's Yisrael, and not only the land of the seven nations, it has to be the land of all ten nations. The Abish is going to make the borders of Eretz Yisrael incredibly large, because that's what he promised Avraham Avinu, Bebris Ben Absorim. And Menashe can't stop. You can't stop Menashe. If you try to explain someone logically, you say, look, so a person says, you know, I'm in Golas, but Baruch Hashem, I can pay the bills, I have a nice yeshiva, I have a nice shul. What? So, so I, I can't do the mitzvahs in the base of Mikdash. It's not my fault. Well, Mashiach will come around the base of Mikdash. It'll be nice, but it's not my fault. So I, I'm, I'm a good to yid. But Menashe can't live with that. Menashe can't live with that. He knows that... When is this world going to be the real garden for Hashem? When is Eretz Yisrael going to be the, in every part of Eretz Yisrael that is going to, sh to be the reveal the Eibishter's glory? Not the way it's now, but when Mashiach is going to come. So Menashe is always Nashani Elikim Al Kol He's always screaming Mashiach, Mashiach now. That was the Indian of, that's the mile of Menashe. And therefore Menashe is trusted to be Be'ever Hayardik. The Rebbe Zero is that every Yid has to be like Menashe. And he can't, he can't lose the connection because he always goes back to family Simchas. Exactly. You go back to family Simchas. They're here and there. See, very good. I like your word. So every Yid, the Rebbe said that Shabbos HaGodl, that every Yid has to learn from Menashe. And the connection was that in that year, Menashe, Menashe, that was the day of Menashe's Korban. But the Rebbe Zero was that every Yid has to be like Menashe. Every Yid has to be Menashe. A Yid is not comfortable in Golas. Could be, but Begashmis is doing well. He's financially, he's doing well. Baruch Hashem, he's healthy and he's wealthy and everything is good. But the Shekhinah has to be Begilui in the whole of Eretz Yisrael. And a Yid belongs in Eretz Yisrael. A Yid doesn't belong in Chutz A Yid doesn't belong in Golas. So he can't stop screaming Mashiach now. So every Yid has to be Menashe, especially in the three weeks. And Parshas Matas Masa is always in the three weeks. We always we have to be like Menashe. We have to scream Mashiach now. And in Mitzvah Shem, we'll scream Mashiach now. The Eved will help. We'll talk and be Mashiach now. The Bias Mashiach Tzedkenu. And talk to Yachim Hashem Al Kechaz Gevulcha. Israel is going to become the country the way it was promised. Not that the, today they read, there was a recently report that Israel is the eighth most powerful country yeah, in the world. I heard, I heard so, so, but the, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what. But the Eivish, the, the Eivish, this is this is before Mashiach comes. The Eivish will give, and the Mitzvah Mashiach that can come will build the base of Mikdash. Kiyachim Hashem al Kechaz Gevulcha. Israel will be the Gashmi, is the biggest country, the wealthiest country, and the country where every person, the human being in the world, is based in base Tefillah, where every Yid comes and every Goy comes to see the Eivish there. Aharabayis, Yerushalayim, Yerakoyim, Rabbi Yis Mashiach Tzedkenu.